The Rock Jock Pro Edition 4-inch suspension lift kit for the Jeep JL Wrangler includes everything you'll need to get your Jeep equipped for the toughest trails out there, including front coil springs, urethane coil spring isolators, front bump stops, front Johnny Joint upper control arms, anti-rock front and rear sway bars, front Johnny Joint lower control arms, front and rear Johnny Joint adjustable track bars, rear Johnny Joint lower and upper control arms, rear coil springs, and rear bump stops. We'll start the kit installation by getting the vehicle safely in the air and removing all four wheels and tires. We'll mention now that in most cases, you'll want to retain the factory hardware for reuse. First step will be to remove the front plastic chin panel using an 8mm socket and a small screwdriver to pop out the plastic rivets. Support the front axle on stands and lower the vehicle to release the load on all the suspension hardware. Remove the bottom shock hardware by using an 18mm socket and wrench. Then using an 18mm wrench, remove the hardware that holds the upper shock portion of the shock. With the shock out of the way, remove the 15mm nut that retains the brake line bracket to the lower control arm. Remove the 10 millimeter head bolt from the back of the coil spring bucket on the differential housing that retains the brake line bracket. Free the brake line bracket and move it aside. With a pair of needle nose pliers, remove the vent hose from the differential housing. Remove the drive shaft from the differential yoke with a 15 millimeter socket and set it up out of the way. Next, we'll remove the entire sway bar assembly with an 18 mm wrench and socket, remove the bolt and nut that attach to the bottom of the sway bar link at the differential housing on the driver's side and then on the passenger side. Using a 15 mm socket, remove the fasteners that hold the sway bar to the frame on both the passenger and driver's side, which will allow you to remove the factory sway bar as one unit. Remove the entire sway bar assembly as a unit. With a 21 millimeter socket, remove the front track bar bolt at the differential housing. Now move to the frame end of the track bar and with a 21 millimeter wrench and socket, remove the track bar bolt and remove and discard the factory track bar. Back to the passenger side, remove the shock with an 18 millimeter wrench and socket. Next remove the upper shock hardware by using an 18 millimeter wrench. Now remove the 15 mm nut that attaches the brake hose to the lower control arm and then the 10 mm bolt that attaches the brake hose bracket to the coil spring bucket. Carefully remove the electrical plug from the back side of the passenger side of the differential housing. Raise the vehicle just enough to remove both the coil springs and the plastic coil spring isolators from the differential housing. The combination of a 21 mm socket and 22 mm wrench will allow you to remove the factory lower control arms. Be sure to hang on to the factory hardware as they will need to be used to attach the Johnny Joint equipped control arms back into the chassis. Measure your stock lower control arm and match this dimension to the new adjustable Johnny Joint control arm. Install the new lower control arm. Note that the adjustable Johnny joint end goes into the frame side and the brake hose stud points outward. Torque all bolts down to the spec. Moving to the driver's side upper control arm, remove the arm from the housing using an 18 millimeter wrench and socket. At the frame, as you can see, we've removed the heat shield to gain access to the 18 millimeter bolt. Remove this bolt and the nut plate and then drop the arm out. Measure and adjust your new Johnny Joint upper control arm to match the length of the factory upper control arm.
Before installing the upper control arm, it's a good idea to grease the frame side of the Johnny joint before installing the new control arm Zerk fitting pointing down. Then swing the arm onto the housing bushing. Now go back and install the factory nut plate in the frame and the nut on the housing and torque all the bolts to spec. Moving to the passenger side, we'll start again by removing the heat shield and then repeating the upper arm replacement process. Now repeat the lower control arm replacement process for the passenger side. Now that you've finished control arm installation, we'll move on to the next step. In preparation for the install of the front bump stops, center punch the middle of the top of the coil bucket, then drill out a small pilot hole, followed by stepping up to a 27 by 64 drill bit. Finish off the task by carefully tapping out the hole with a half inch by 13 NC tap. In preparation for raising the vehicle higher, check one more time that your brake lines, differential wire, and vent are free and loose. Also, raise your drive shaft up and out of the way and zip tie it to secure it. Now raise the vehicle to drop the axle further out so the new springs may be installed. At this time, you will want to lay out your coil springs, spring isolators, and front bump stocks along with their hardware. Note that the part numbers on the coils determine either driver or passenger. The Rock Jock kit includes new urethane coil spring isolators to match your new springs, so you may discard the old stock plastic isolators. Install the new spring isolators onto the coil spring buckets of the differential housing, being mindful of properly locating the indexing pins. Pre-assemble your front bump stops by dropping the hardware through the holes. Confirm that your factory upper spring isolator is still in place, and in one action, install the new coil spring over the upper bump stop. Then insert the lower bump stop inside the bottom of the spring, and set the bottom of the spring and the bump stop onto the bump stop pad of the differential housing. Tighten the new lower bump stop to the differential housing with a 3 quarter inch socket. Finish up by rotating the springs so that the ends of the pigtails of the spring are touching the stops and the spring isolators. You may now lower the vehicle back to its new lifted height. Starting with the passenger side, go ahead and reinstall the brake line bracket that attaches the coil spring bracket on the differential housing and then install the brake line bracket that attaches to the lower control arm. Depending on the down travel in your choice of shocks, you may need to bend or flatten the brake line bracket that is on the control arm to gain slack in the brake line. Adjust as necessary. Find the origin of the differential housing wiring harness at the frame. You will want to snip the zip tie and release the full length of the wires. Now you may plug in the harness back at the differential. On the driver's side, disconnect all vent hose mounting clips on the frame. This will allow you to pull the hose down so that the upper factory plastic push connector will now clip back into a new existing hole, giving the vent hose more slack. Don't forget to push the hose back into the metal retaining clip. Now you may reconnect the vent at the differential housing. Insert the last black push connector into the hole in the brake line frame bracket. Now clip the zip tie that is holding the drive shaft up and reconnect it to the differential yoke. Use blue Loctite on the hardware and torque the bolts back down to spec. Now you may install your choice of shocks. Reusing the factory hardware, install the top of the shock first, 
and then push the bottom of the shock up into place and insert it back into the shock mount. Repeat this shock insulation process on the passenger side. Your new Rock Chalk front track bar is constructed of heavy wall chromoly tubing and includes features such as an adjustable length plus greasable Johnny joints at both ends. Install the frame end of the new track bar and torque it to spec. We'll leave the differential housing end of the bar loose until the vehicle is back on the ground. Moving on to the front anti-rock sway bar kit, it's easy to see that everything is here in place to install this kit into your vehicle, including the sway bar arms, frame brackets and bushings, adjustable link rods that feature high quality heim joints, plus a heavy duty forged steel sway bar and all the hardware that will allow you to replace the factory sway bar. Start by installing the Delrin sway bar bushings into the brackets with a mallet. On some vehicle frames, you'll need to dress the factory wells to allow the sway bar brackets to properly fit in place. Apply blue thread locker to the new sway bar bracket hardware. When installing the frame brackets, install both bolts to align the brackets. Using a 15 millimeter socket, tighten and torque the front bolt, but leave the rear bolt loose for the time being. After you have both brackets mounted, apply grease to the insides of the bushings and to the ends of the sway bar. Insert the bar through the bushing on one side and slide it across to start on the opposite bushing. Knock the bar through the bushings with a mallet. With a tape measure, confirm that the bar is centered in the frame brackets. Now that the bar is centered in the brackets, go back and tighten the rearmost frame bracket bolts with a 15 millimeter socket. We'll start with the sway bar installation on the passenger side. Slide the arm on and secure it with the arm retaining hardware using a half inch wrench. Next, insert the pinch bolt through the end of the arm and secure it with a nylock nut using a 9 16th inch wrench and socket combo. Clock the driver's side arm accordingly so it is level with the passenger side arm and then repeat the arm insulation process that was performed on the passenger side. Assemble the sway bar links by threading on the jam nuts first and then installing the heim joints. Thread the heim joints all the way down until they stop. Your finished links should look something like this. Install the driver side sway bar link by simply inserting the heim joint studs into the sway bar arm and the stock sway bar link mounting hole on the differential housing. Tighten using a 5 8 and 3 quarter inch wrench. On the passenger side, repeat this installation process for the top of the sway bar link to the sway bar arm. The bottom of the passenger side link installs into the differential bracket using the new supplied half inch hardware and a misalignment spacer on each side of the heim joint. Tighten down the fastener using two 3 quarter inch wrenches. Your finished front end components installation should look something like this. Finalizing of the track bar and jam nut tightening of the anti-rock links will be performed when the vehicle is back on the ground. Support the rear axle on stands and lower the vehicle to release the load of all the suspension hardware. Starting on the driver's side, Remove the three 8mm head bolts that attach the splash aprons inside the wheel well to gain access to the top of the shock. With an 18mm wrench and socket, remove the bottom of the shock first. Next, using an 18mm wrench, remove the bolt that holds the upper portion of the shock from the frame mount. Repeat the shock removal process on the passenger side.
Beginning on the passenger side, with an 18 millimeter wrench and socket, remove the sway bar link from the differential housing. Then repeat the same process on the driver's side. Next, lift the sway bar up and fold the end links to the sway bar. While still on the driver's side, with a 15 millimeter socket, remove the sway bar mounting bolts that hold the bar to the frame and let the sway bar rest on the exhaust pipe. Now on the passenger side, repeat the same process of removing the sway bar bracket from the frame using a 15 millimeter socket. Remove the sway bar attaching bolts to the passenger side and then remove the entire sway bar assembly as one unit from the vehicle. With a 13 millimeter wrench, remove the bolts attaching the brake line tabs to the back of the upper control arm brackets and move the brackets up and out of the way. Back on the driver's side, using a 21 millimeter socket, remove the upper control arm bolt from the differential housing and then from the frame. Now you may remove the arm. Determine right and left of the new arms by matching up the bin location with the factory arm. Measure and adjust your new Johnny Joint upper control arm to match the length of the factory upper control arm. Install the new control arm with the adjustable Johnny Joints in the frame and the Zerk fittings pointing down. To remove the hardware from the driver's side rear lower control arm at the differential, use a 21 millimeter socket along with a 22 millimeter wrench. After adjusting the new control arm based on the measurement from the stock arm, install the new control arm onto the vehicle. Again, the adjustable Johnny joints install into the frame. Repeat the arm installation process on the passenger side by installing the upper arm first. Finish up the control arm installation by installing the last lower arm. Your completed arm installation should look something like this. Remove the rear track bar from the differential housing using a 21 millimeter socket and then from the frame using a 21 millimeter socket along with a 22 millimeter wrench. Remove the vent hose from the housing. Now raise the vehicle just enough to remove both of the coil springs. Check one more time that your parking brake cables, vent hose, and brake lines are free and loose. Then raise the vehicle to drop the axle further out so that the new springs may be installed. The new Rock Chalk rear coil springs have the part numbers listed to help you determine both left and right. You'll be reusing the factory upper rubber spring isolators with the new springs. Note that the end of the pigtails of the springs must be rotated to meet the stops in the isolators. Additionally, the isolators have locating pins that must be aligned with the holes in the frame when you're installing them. 
Starting on the passenger side, install the upper spring isolator and the top of the spring into the spring pocket of the frame. Next, pop the spring over the lower coil spring bucket of the differential housing. In some cases, the passenger side spring may come in contact with the gas tank when you're trying to install it. If this happens, you will need to lower the vehicle slightly and the spring will pop into place. Repeat this coil spring installation process on the driver's side. Still on the driver's side, install your new bump stop to the differential housing using a half inch wrench and socket. Repeat this bump stop installation process on the passenger side. You may now lower the vehicle down to its new lifted height. With a 13mm wrench, reattach the brake line brackets to the back of the upper control arm brackets. Reinstall the vent tube, making sure that it has enough slack. Back to the track bar, adjust your new rock jock track bar to match the measurements of your stock track bar. Go ahead and install it to the frame and torque it to spec. We'll leave the differential housing of the end of the bar loose until the vehicle is back on the ground. Starting on the passenger side, install your choice of shocks. While reusing the factory hardware, install the top end of the shock first. Then while pushing on the bottom of the shock up, Place the eyelet of the shock into the differential shock mount. Install the hardware and torque to spec. Repeat the same shock installation process on the driver's side. Reinstall the plastic splash aprons on both sides. Now let's take a look at the rear anti-rock sway bar kit from Rock Jock, which includes a heavy-duty forged steel sway bar, machine sway bar arms, Delrin mounting bushings, adjustable link rods that feature high-quality heim joints, and all the hardware to install the kit into the chassis. Start the rear anti-rock sway bar installation by removing the chamfer in the end of the frame cross number tube, and you will have to clean up the seam of the inside of the tube to allow the sway bar bushings to be inserted. Try not to remove too much material, as you want both of the bushings to fit snugly into the frame. Next, install both the sway bar bushings into the frame using a mallet. Apply grease inside the sway bar bushings and to the ends of the sway bar. Start the bar installation by placing the bar into the bushing on the passenger side and drive it through with a mallet. Once the bar slides through the first bushing, you'll need to pull down on the bar to locate the back side of the driver's side bushing and then drive the bar through using the mallet. With a tape measure, confirm that the bar is centered in the bushings. Back on the driver's side, install the anti-rock arm onto the bar and tighten the arm retaining hardware using a half inch socket. Finish up the arm installation by inserting the pinch bolt and nylock nut through the arm. Tighten them down using a 916 wrench and socket. Clock the passenger side arm accordingly so that it's level with the driver's side arm and then repeat the arm installation process. Assemble the sway bar lengths by threading on the jam nuts first, then followed by the heim joints. 
Thread both of the heim joints all the way down on the rod until they stop. Your finished links should look something like this. Install the passenger side sway bar link by simply inserting the heim joint studs onto the sway bar arm and then the stock sway bar link mounting hole on the differential housing. Be mindful to install the link in front of the brake line and ABS wire. Tighten down to spec using a 5 8 inch wrench and a 3 quarter inch socket. Repeat this link installation process on the driver's side, again being mindful of the brake line and ABS wire. Your finished rear end components installation should look something like this. Finalizing of the track bar, jam nut tightening, and the anti-rock links will be formed when the vehicle is back on the ground. Now go back and grease all of the suspension zerk fittings from front to back with a grease gun using a good quality Molly grease. If you can't find this grease, it can always be purchased through Rock Chalk. After greasing the Zerk fittings, go back and install the heat shields at the frame end of the upper front control arms. Using a big screwdriver or a pry bar, rotate the control arm Johnny joints in their brackets until they are in a neutral position and then go back and tighten the control arm jam nuts using an inch and a half inch wrench for the upper arms and an inch and seven eighths wrench on the lower arms. With the installation of this lift kit, we'll be installing new 37-inch Nitto tires on a set of KMC wheels. At this point, you may now lower the vehicle back down on the ground, install the wheels and tires, and torque the lug nuts. Now that the vehicle is on the ground, we'll address the track bars. Start by measuring from a fixed point on the frame to a fixed point on the tire and repeat this process on the other side. The difference in these measurements will tell you how much you need to move the frame over the axle for track bar adjustment. There are various methods, but we've chosen to use a ratchet strap attached to the frame and to the differential housing to achieve ours. Keep in mind that you may need to move your vehicle in an opposite direction of what we have illustrated here. Go back and confirm your dimensions from the frame to the tire on both sides. Once you have the frame centered in between the tires, you may now move on to attaching the track bar to the differential housing. Adjust the front track bar as necessary so the bolt will line up and install freely. Then reinstall the factory track bar bolt and nut plate and torque to spec. Now you may tighten up the track bar jam nut and release the ratchet strap. With an 11 millimeter wrench, confirm that the gold and a rock link rods are free and not in any kind of bind. Snug them up in the heim joints and then tighten the jam nuts using a 3 quarter inch wrench on the jam nut and a 19 millimeter wrench on the heim joint. Reinstall the plastic chin panel under the front bumper, reusing its plastic rivets and 8 millimeter head screws. Repeat the track bar adjustment and attachment process to the rear differential. Again, on this process, verify your measurements multiple times to confirm that the frame is centered between the tires. Now that the frame is centered between the tires, adjust the rear track bar until the whole of the bar aligns with the bracket on the differential housing. Finish up by installing the factory hardware and torque to spec. Be sure to snug up the track bar's jam nut by using an inch and a half inch wrench before releasing the ratchet strap. Repeat the sway bar link rod adjustment and jam nut tightening process on the rear. Be sure to check to see if the brake lines have enough slack while the suspension is in full droop. If need be, adjust the brackets by simply bending them upwards to gain more brake line slack. And now, let's hit the trail. As you can see, the Johnny Joint equipped suspension, paired along with the anti-rock style adjustable sway bars, 
allows for more articulation in the suspension. It's this flex that allows all four wheels to maintain contact with the ground beneath the vehicle, which gives the driver more confidence to take on tougher obstacles than they would have with a stock vehicle. For more information, check us out at rockjock4x4.com or you can see us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.